My name is Sadiq Khan. It's my pleasure uh, to be hosting this Glamour Unfiltered special to mark one year uh, since the COVID lockdown began. And I'm really humbled to be joined by Dorcas and uh, Sue. Royal Free Hospital as a nutrition nurse and uh, my role involves just reviewing patients who need long-term feed and so either finding the right tubing for them. Um, and then throughout the peak of the pandemic I uh, volunteered to the um, NHS Nightingale as part of the redeployment program. So my job changed from working nine to five to doing long days and working in IC unit that I have never worked before. And the redeployment program is really just basically going into a different area, offering your skills, and then also being open to receive new skills. Sue, I know you're, you play an important role in keeping our city going to enable key workers like Dorcas and others to go from home to work and back home again. Sh share with us what your job, what your job is both before the pandemic and how your job changed during the pandemic. Before my current role as a transport support and enforcement officer, with TfL, I worked as a revenue protection inspector for the buses. Um, in my current role, which became effective as of April 2020, um, the TSE role is primarily focused on tackling antisocial behaviour on the network and supporting frontline staff in the face of workplace violence and aggression. Uh, whilst all, whilst also being a visible reassuring presence for all staff and travelling passengers and to help keep the network and people and passengers safe. I'm lucky. I can do my job working from the safety of my home. I don't need to go out uh, when it's uh, unsafe to do so uh, and I don't need to do so. But I've at times not felt my best. I think my mental health has suffered a bit uh, in relation to being at home, being isolated, and the challenges of the pandemic. Just, just, I mean, and, and don't talk about them if you feel it's personal, but have there been times where your mental health has been affected, where you've had issues in relation to how you're coping? Uh, I'll ask Dorcas first and then Sue. Uh, and if it's, if you have, what sort of things have helped you get through this? During the peak of COVID, I remember like being really anxious, not being able to sleep. And just like hearing like machines, because like you work in the IC unit and they're like machines in the ears and whatnot. And then I remember when I was able to completely rest, this is when the first wave ended, I was completely able to rest, just really re reflect about obviously what I've gone through. And I thought, how can I go back to an ICU unit if we did have another wave? And the fact that I was constantly anxious thinking about this, I knew that there was something wrong. So during the first wave, obviously, I went back to destructive behaviour, which was either like, you know, just overeating or not eating enough, just to surround that. And I remember just saying that I can't do this again. So when I was asked to go back to ICU during this current wave, I had to say no. I had to just really be honest with them and say, actually, I can't do this. And fortunately for me, I was listened to, and I am currently having some psychotherapy, um, which is which is helping. And I guess I wanted to challenge the whole concept of what a strong woman is meant to be, because people will see nurses or you know doctors or you know people that work for. Um, the national public health and thing that we're really, really strong. The strength doesn't really necessarily mean that you can't be vulnerable. And for me, talking about this and talking to my colleagues about this actually gives me that strength to, to realise that I'm not I'm not alone and really challenge that public perception of what a strong woman is meant to be. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Sue, how about you? What, what sort of challenges have you, if any, gone through over the last uh, year or so? I've been having some form of um, anxiety about my own safety and well-being being on the front line every day. Um, I've been adhering, as has everyone else, to government guidelines um, as best as possible. Um, and my home is my sanctuary. When I finish work, 
and I close my door behind me, I, I switch off. I um, can do something simple like read a book, um, play some music. Um, and I also have two rescue cats, which is very therapeutic and relaxing. I've seen over the last year some amazing acts of uh, Londoners. You two are a good example that have given me hope and have really raised my spirits. Do you have any nuggets or stories about things over the last year that have really just made your day and just given you hope and a sense of optimism going forward? There was a patient that I was looking after. Um, I remember everyone just thinking that this patient wasn't going to make it. And then a couple of months went by, I think it took about three months. I went on to a ward to see another patient. I saw this patient being discharged and walking out of the hospital. And I remember it just started, you know, started weeping. And I just thought, this is why we do what we do. This is why we work for the NHS, to see people leave and actually be healed or, you know, be well. And yeah, I would never forget this story. And I can just like vividly remember it in the midst of uncertainty, there's been a lot of like fear and a lot of pain. A lot of people are hurting. But I really just want to convey this message just to say that we need to take our mental health as a priority. Um, and for someone who's been so open about how I'm feeling now, I think it's really important for people to just talk about the message because it is a shared, shared thing that we're all going through. So yeah. Please, please, please just get some help if you know that you need help. And, you know, it's not shamed upon. We're celebrating this because you're being open and you're being bold. And it's that courage that we need. Um, and I, I, that would be my message, really. Well, listen, Sue Dawkins, can I, as the Mayor of London, uh, thank you for being extraordinary over the last uh, uh, 12 months. Uh, I mean, one of the things that inspires me as Mayor it's meeting brave women like you doing amazing work. And for those watching this uh, Glamour Unfiltered special to mark the one year anniversary of this uh, lockdown, I'm sure you've inspired them as much as you've inspired me. And on behalf of Londoners, thank you so much and stay safe. Thank you.